and we even put a a a, a seal on it like you do for paramedics and things. You you put a seal on your on your fake documents. I'm sorry. Yeah, your yeah your fake documents from Quack University. Yes, yes. And, and Professor D- <laughs> Professor Quack uh-huh. had said that we were some of his prize students. You, you were. <laughs> Let, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. <laughs> Professor Quack. In your graduating class. Yes. How many people were in your graduating class? Oh, let me see. The multitude. <laughs> the multitude. Okay, I'll tell you what. It's, it's, it must have been at least. It, it must have been at least <laughs> 39 or 40 of us. 39? 40. Or 40. Gosh. <laughs> Oh well, well, well. That's that universe. But you have a degree from someplace else, also. You yes, know? I have one from some local place like Virginia State University. Virginia State University. Uh, that you got a degree from for there. For real, for that. That yeah. was for real. Uh-huh. At Hampton University. Now, what did you get from Virginia State? What degree did you get from Virginia State? Uh in elementary education. Elementary education. education with a minor in English and psychology. Uh huh. And then you also went to famous whatever Hampton, Hampton University. University. Okay. I got my master's degree there in uh, was a secondary education mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. emphasis on um, my emphasis was in psychology. Mm. And Lord, I should not ever forget that man's name, Walter Walter's heart. He loved Walter. Um, I did some extra work then mm. in education because mm-hmm. I was uh, trying to uh, get the up to date in the thing in psychology as it relates to the mm-hmm. teaching of children well this is interesting because it seems to me that's like the, more than anything the psychology as we say part or whatever ha- really did you well because you had some teaching techniques that no one ever thought of before you came to what, what school did you eventually um, um what was your major school um the one with, with, with principal Virginia school, State. Yeah, no no i mean with, uh, with um what's that uh principal slaughter what school was that uh, that, that, Wait, you, that you taught in uh with principal slaughter Oh, that was uh, that's Norfolk mm-hmm. at Norview Middle. Norview Middle. I only taught there for maybe five years. But however, isn't that? Did you start? Is that the first place you taught? No, the first place I started was at a called a school called La Terry, where Walter went as a first grader. Mm-hmm. Well, Lady Bug mm-hmm. went as a first grader. Uh, and and that's uh, that was a. Uh, 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 the, the younger sister uh-huh, of, 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 of your husband. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how long did you teach there? I taught at East uh, not to carry for see one, two, mm-hmm. three, four. Mm-hmm. Four four years. Uh-huh. Because that was the big when they all the schools were closed down because of integration. Oh uh. some some folk did not want it. Mm-hmm. And some said we want it, mm-hmm. and if we don't want it, the teacher association went to court mm-hmm. and said if there will not be any education for some children, mm-hmm. there'll be no education for no mm-hmm. children. And that was the union. That's the teachers' union made that pronouncement. They made that yes. took that stand. And we didn't. I didn't understand it because. I had not been involved with anything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And we were told mm-hmm. uh, we would have to take a vacation. Mm-hmm. I said, a vacation. I said, what do? What are my babies going to do? Mm-hmm. They won't have a teacher. Mm-hmm. As if I was the only teacher in the whole world. Well, it seems to me that the way your teaching technique seemed like you was the only teacher in the world 
Now, but what I'm trying to say is how do you uh, how, um, start developing, there's a certain technique that you always use, well, not always, but it seems as though you, like I said before, you were a different teacher. Now, did that happen there or did that happen when you went to the other, the, the five-year school? The, it probably started there. Because mm -hmm. I made a mistake and told the children, the weather is changing and you may leave home and it will not, it won't be raining. If it's, when you leave home and it's cold, you put on some socks, put on some socks. And, and uh, one little boy said, but I don't have but one pair. Mm. I said, well, put those on. He said, if they're dirty, what am I going to do? I said, you ever heard about soap and water? Mm -mm. He said, yes, ma'am. I said, to pretend that you are going to have a pet and you need to wash the pet, to make the pet clean. Mm -hmm. He said, but I, you know, little first graders are going to say, but I don't own a pet. <laughs> One little boy said, and I don't even have any socks. Mm. But this hit me. I said, my babies in here don't have a pair of socks. I said, this is, must be the poorest school in the world, I thought. Mm -hmm. I said, I know what I can do. I told the teacher that shared the room with me. And said, I said, Louise, what would you do in a case like this? She said, you know what I would do. I said, what would you do? She said, I just get a general information permit from the parents and ask them, would it be okay if I just get the children in the class who are low in their certain items they use for work, coming to, going to church? I said, going to church. Mm -hmm. Would it be okay? And give it to the child to take home. If the parents say it's okay, there is your door to open it up and do what you want to do and can do. Mm -hmm. I got the notes back that day before I went home. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything, we'll, I will appreciate it. I left there. At, first time I'd ever been to the store called Caps on Church Street. Mm -hmm. I had seen that store, but I had not ever been in it. This is in Norfolk. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So Miss Bright told me there would be a store you can go in, and you can have some choices of sizes and prices and everything. Mm -hmm. I went there and then I took one of the kids with me, because he's the one that said he didn't, he didn't have any socks. And then he didn't have any shoes. I had his little broken down. She wore his broken down shoes to school that day. Mm -hmm. We left there. We went down to Caps. When I walked in there, the lady said, May I help you? I said, You certainly can. I said, My baby here would like, would need some spare shoes and he needs some socks. What size do you wear, honey? And I said her attitude to me was not sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little boy, the guys, little fellow said. Well, well let I me ask. Let, 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 well, I am interrupting you, but I mean, this was the uh, early '60s. This was 1957. Ooh, 1957. Wow. Okay. The year I graduated so, from Virginia State. Uh huh. So this would actually mean that this is a well, the civil rights era wasn't even just coming up about coming off. Like, so so I'm going to assume that this lady down at the store caps or whatever it is was a was a white lady or what or was it was a black lady what who was it? She, she appeared her mannerism and when she talked and everything. I think she belonged to one of the the, the Jewish. Uh, Synagogues. Mm -hmm. If 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 what just looking at a person mm -hmm. and listen to her conversation, because mm -hmm. she's mentioned the word the Rabbi Stern. Mm -hmm. The Rabbi Stern was a rabbi mm -hmm. in the Norfolk area. You, if you knew Norfolk at that time, 
you knew Rabbi Stein. Because Rabbi Stein would be the person who would say to you, uh, brother, if they call you, if they call you, whatever they call, we call you, he would say, all of you in. We're here every, every Saturday morning. And we went there before they had the the service mm -hmm. for the, the, the Jewish people mm -hmm. incorporate on Saturdays. He said, you need not call me uh, bishop or rabbi or anything. It's whatever you call the person who is your spiritual leader in your church. And somebody said, or oh, Sunday school. He said, or oh, Sunday school. Wherever you go for your spiritual and training, you call me that. Mm -hmm. One little girl said, you mean I can call you Reverend Jones? <laughs> One said, yes. You mean I can call you brother or something? He said, yes. He said, in other words, we're family. Mm -hmm. And I want you to always feel this is family and that we won't have to always just come here for uh, our program, I mean, for getting together. We may go to your church, you know, your place of worship. Mm -hmm. One little girl said, you're going to have to get permission to do that, won't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, I will. And I'll be happy to go and meet with any of your spiritual advisors. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to introduce you to mm -hmm. someone who's going to teach you a mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. I said, now, who is this girl? Mm -hmm. She must be a rabbi's daughter or somebody. Mm -hmm. She was just like the I was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from a school representative. And when we did Heavenly Light, that was the song that she taught us. What, what, what does that sound like? But, but, but wait, was it a gospel song? What kind of song? Was it a, like a Catholic kind of song? It was a semi-classical, I call it, semi-classical uh, anthem mm -hmm. or hymn. How did, how did it go? I know you know it. You know all them songs. <laughs> 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 the first line was send out thy heavenly light the light that shines upon the something like that mm -hmm. and she would be just directed mm -hmm. that thing you know, she directed. and I was so impressed mm -hmm. I said not only can she teach you music she is musical she knows how to wave her hands so and tell us when to hold the note. Mm -hmm. I didn't know then that you call that sustaining. Mm -hmm. I just call it holding the note. Mm -hmm. I would look over there. There was the rabbi had sneaked in and got in the chair beside the children, beside mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So he was going to have to learn it too. He said, everybody who walks in here will learn this, he said, what is it? Somebody said, heaven and light. As if they was one trying to say, didn't you hear? You sneaked in here, but why don't you <laughs> pay attention? <laughs> Brother, let me tell you, heaven and light became our theme song, I think. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I was there is because Uncle Sherman, the choir director at Booker T, had asked for persons who would like to attend he couldn't get a first a person to raise his hand mm. because he said, my mother and father may not want me to go down there at, at uh, that Jewish center. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Uncle Sherman saw me with the choir so He said to me, sweetheart, have you ever been to the Jewish synagogue temple? I said, no, sir. He said, if your parents will allow it, would you like to attend? Mm -hmm. And their sessions are on Saturdays. I said, yes, sir, I would like to, uh, to attend, but get, to get permission from your parents. Mm -hmm. He said, Cause that's good. Yes, your Saturday, they're getting ready for Sunday. I said, I know it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get that bus to, that bus driver was not driving fast enough, mm -hmm. brother. To get me home, get me to my run home mm. and tell mother and give the letter to mother. 
But when I got there, she knew about it already. Mm. I said, that was a community. If you said, hell, uh, you didn't put the load to it. By the time you get home, the word has gotten that I said a bad word. Mm. I said, this, this is why I say I lived in a community with grandmamas and grandfathers because mm-hmm. they took care of everybody. And you could not say I didn't say it because they would give you the details of how that word hello came out into it <laughs> and how I didn't pronounce all the, <laughs> the uh, sounds and everything. <laughs> Brother, let me tell you, when I got that note and daddy and says, S- sister, would you like to go? I said, yes, sir. Mother said, y- you sure you want to go? Because I don't want to send this note back to Mr. Green saying you may want to go. He needs a yes or no Mm -hmm. because he's trying to get the representatives from the choir at least. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to go. I couldn't get that. That bus was driving across down Campostella Road. I thought Pop had retired. I thought he was ready to retire. I said, anybody who can't drive any faster than that needs to retire. <laughs> I got the Booker T. Well, you couldn't just go in there and go and go run it on the third floor to where the choir room was, where Uncle Sherman would be. I, well, you know how you watch the clock in the, cl- in the room? Mm. It could not go around fast enough for me. Mm. When I got that note to Uncle Sherman, I said, Mr. Green, Here's the note from my parents to you. Mm -hmm. He said, is it a good note or a good? I saw it. They wrote it. Because kids that started at that time writing notes, Mm -hmm. they were absent. Mm -hmm. And they signed their parents' name. (laughs) And the parents wouldn't even know that they had not been in school that day. (laughs) Until they have a PTA meeting. (laughs) <laughs> it's good to see the person who writes all these lovely notes. <laughs> and, and that's a shock. I, 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 I have been writing you any notes. <laughs> and that's when they started that thing about if a parent, if you're going to be absent, you had to have it signed by the, the adult parent, adult parent in the home. Or your person who is representing you. <laughs> well, Uncle Sherman said, thanks so much. Do you need any, any help getting there? Because, you know, the buses won't, the school buses won't be working that on Saturday. I said, no, sir, I don't need any help. I'll walk if I, it's, well, I said, yes, sir. Because I don't want to miss it. Mm. When I got there and saw all those children in there, I said, this is an experience that I'm not going to forget. I had been, I had seen Bernstein's concert. This is Leonard Bernstein, the, um, the, okay, the orchestra. Let, the, the orchestra yeah. I had seen, um, see, Bernstein. I had seen, um, uh, the New York Philharmonic, the Philadelphia something body else. And I had seen about six or seven professional groups in Norfolk at the Center Theater. Mm-hmm. And that was always on a Saturday too. Mm-hmm. I guess they chose Saturday because it wasn't would be conflict with the classes, schools. Or the church. On mm-hmm. Sunday, or Sunday church, but let's get back to that. Well, how, when you say how, so, these were children all over Norfolk. Or what, was it mixed? Or, no, it was, was not mixed. It was segregated. I mean, you could be living right next door to a segregate up to a, another group of a ethnic background. I meant, I meant, um, when you went and seen all these children, all the children were they mixed in this? In, yeah, in this, uh-huh. in this, yeah, yeah. But this was people all over. Very Norfolk. mixed. You know it's I said to my later on, I said, that was a picture of how things are going to look 
when his schools open again because his schools were not open. Mm. But they were open for if to a, in the private schools mm -hmm. whose parents could afford to have teachers to work with them. And mm. parents work with them too. Mm. Anything they could do to keep the schools separated. Mm. Okay, so we veered off because we were in the store getting some shoes and socks for one of your one of your students or one of your one of your as you call your students babies. Um, so what happened there? Did, did he get the socks, the shoes, or did he, he get got, socks for other kids? He got his shoes, and he said, "These shoes told me these shoes are so pretty." that I can use them when I go to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I, said, I said, you certainly can, baby. And he said, and thank you for the socks to, to go with my Sunday school shoes. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, I don't remember anybody saying something about Sunday school shoes, mm -hmm. but the little shoes that he had definitely became... <laughs> Play schools, play shoes, mm. and not Sunday school. Because when you was going to Sunday school, you got to put on what your best that you had, you know. Mm. And you did, did that on Saturday, getting ready for Sunday. And the sun shiny shoes, and then put yes, everything you know, the, the day before you. Yeah. Griffin. Shoe Griffin polish. shoe polish. You yeah. remember Griffin? I, I know it well. I, I said I'm thinking that you would know Griffin. For for a tiny, 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 tiny. Look, I wasn't very good at it, I think. Uh, I used to um, have my little shoebox shine shoes up on 3rd Avenue. You we had should, a shoebox shoe oh, shine Oh, yeah. And, and, I, and I would, uh, you know, shine people for money. You know, shine uh -huh. people. But I wasn't very good. My friend, my friends, uh -oh. they, they were all much better than I were. So I wasn't cut out the shine shoes. <laughs> You were you were associate person <laughs> But look, when the lady said, I guess you I guess you gonna need some socks. Mm. I looked at that lady, I wanted to take her out the back of, of the store and I had never even been in the store before. And I said to her, um when, when she went to, to Brick Give him, give him the choices of what he what socks he wanted. Mm -hmm. I went to her and I said, "Is it possible that you could talk a little sweeter to my baby?" I think that's the first time I ever used the word "baby," identifying my children. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, "Excuse me, oh, I didn't know that was your child." I said. Everyone I have in my class became, are, no, are my baby. Everyone is my And she said, oh, can you forgive me? I said, it was forgiven the minute I came and asked you if you could. And she said, told the kid with me, he said, she says, come here, darling. No, no, come here, baby. And the little guy looked at me. As if to say, we gonna have to call her. I guess he said, I got to call her this lady, babe, Mrs. Baby, because you couldn't just say baby or in lady, get to put a hand on it, because it was not one of their playmates. I don't know. That came up from somewhere. That's why children had, we end up calling people aunt this and uncle this, mm -hmm. because my daddy said, if they're not your playmates, and not your sister and your brother, or in the family, you are re relieved of the identification to that person. You don't have to say Mrs. this and Mr. that. He said, uh, so I said, now, only thing I can do with this situation here is every Saturday, I'm not going to be able to take care of my responsibilities at home. That was the only thing that worried me. That was the, the rehearsal, um, the, the singing rehearsal, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But see, Rabbi, Rabbi Stern had been there for a long time, and I know it, because I had never been to the Jewish Center. I knew where it was located. Mm -hmm. We had to have a prayer something, they called it, where the the rabbi and any other men, people of the cloth, mm -hmm. 
would preside over the session. And we had the famous Evelyn Light song. Of course. Because I'm telling you, you would have thought that we were at the Metropolitan Opera House. The way we stood up, that walked up there and got in our little section to sing. And re- I looked over there, Rabbi Stern was had this fatherly look. I just said, these are my children here. Mm-hmm. Give an ear. <laughs> and when we were getting ready to sing the, the Heavenly Light song, mm-hmm. somebody came in there and wanted a picture of the Heavenly Light Choir. No one had told us for that time, brother, that they were giving us a name, but the name came as a result of the song that we learned. Mm -hmm. That group. And I guess the next group that came in there, they had a song we taught. They had another name. We opened our mouths and sang that heavenly light song. And the girl who was directing us, and, and she was she was so moved because there was one part that we were having difficulty getting and they got it. I think they were for little voices for the tenors who mm-hmm. sing it. I saw a tear trickle down her cheeks. Mm-hmm. She was so thankful. I thought she was sick. I had seen by the teach and cry. You know, do that. Teacher's supposed to be brave and strong. I thought I had not had one that cried. <laughs> mm-hmm. When we finished having a light, only thing happened was a quietness. As if they weren't sure, are you to applaud? Are you to smile? You are to get up and walk out? That there should something that they could have done. I was waiting for somebody to do something. You just stand in there because you just finished singing that last word, mm-hmm. light. Mm-hmm. And we had to put the T on the end, light. Because we were singing, somebody was singing, and she said she heard the word light. Never light. She said light as a, it's L-I-G-H-T. <laughs> so you want to say light. <laughs> it says you may have to move your body to get that. <laughs> oh, I see, she was dramatic. She chose the right person. But when that the heavenly light was finished, and we came from where we were standing to sing, we went back to little in, individual tables. We never sat with a person of your ethnic identity. Mm-hmm. You just sat in a space that was available. And I think that was planned because when you walk in there, it was not an organized like this. Mm. It was scattered. Well, let, me, let me go back. So, what, what you said you finished the song and there was silence. Well, what broke the silence? What happened? Rabbi came in. He he came up and went to the front and he said, "If your heart, no, no the, he said the stillness." I think he said the stillness or the quietness as a result of that beautiful heavenly light choir. And that's when he called us the heavenly light choir. I know you're at a point you don't know how to express it. Let's do it the old fashioned way. Let's give them a hand clap. And they applauded. Well, one the little old man in back in there said, I don't think it's, well, he said, wait a minute, Rabbi. And one of the children said, you can call him uh, at what his first name was. Don't you think we should all stand when we do that? He said, I was in an audience where one time this somebody said, the greatest, one of the greatest way of showing your appreciation for a performance is a standing ovation. It was just like Somebody had walked in there with a gun and said, stand to applaud. They stood right on up so graciously and applauded as if they were being paid. 
Rabbi said, that's pitiful. That is, <laughs> that is pitiful. He said, he said, well, maybe I used the word, I said applaud. Maybe I should have said, one little kid said clap. Mm. It's, that's the word. Can we all stand and clap <laughs> with a standing o, you know, with a standing ovation? And the little girl said, that's what I meant. They applauded it. And applauded it. And applauded it. And I looked over there at Rabbi. Rabbi said, you know, when you're planning things, you don't ever know how it's going to be presented. You don't ever know. He told the, told us, you call this faith. You have to have the faith to believe it's going to be all right. <clears throat> he said, and wherever you go, wherever you uh, go for your when schools open, because he knew schools were closed. I want you to treat each other, your teachers, the advisors, and teach them with the greatest amount of respect. Not because you have to, but because it's the right thing to do. Mm. Now, we, I wanted him to come and work at Booker T with me mm. when schools open again. <laughs> Brother, that guy was so influent, so much influence that whenever the, the Jewish cent community center was sponsoring something, you had to get there early to try to find a seat and somewhere to park your car if you own one. I said, that was beautiful. Bernstein taught us that when groups are getting ready to perform, you will hear them making all kinds of musical notes. You see, you call that they're warming up. Mm -hmm. And you'll see one person with an instrument like this, and he held it up, the violin. He said, that is the person who's responsible for giving the pitch so all the other instruments and people who are playing can get theirs to sound the same way as mm -hmm. the person who they're giving the pitch. Violin. Mm -hmm. I said, that's what, if I ever learn to play, I want to play the violin so I can give the pitch. That was the only reason, because I did not know anything about a violin or anybody else how to play it. Mm -hmm. And then when it was over, he, he said, there, there are parents in here of these fine young boys and girls. I want to thank you for having given them the opportunity to work up with us on Saturday. No, mm -hmm. work with me and the others on mm -hmm. Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And they stipulated that word Saturday. That's a holiday for them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that either. Mm -hmm. But I did see some of the men and the boys coming, going down the hall, and they had on, the, I call it, I thought it was just a beanie, a cap. Mm -hmm. That was that cap for service. Mm -hmm. And I said, I would like to come down here some Saturday to service. I said, but I don't think I can do it because schools are closed. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it didn't work with them. Mm -hmm. You could come anytime you want to come. But brother, when I went to school that uh, to let Uncle Sherman know about that first thing in the concert, mm. he said, I was right out there. Then you see me. Mm. Mm. He said, I wanted to be sure there was somebody there for you. Because see, your mother is not well, and I, I did, can't expect her to have to mm. go through the process of trying to get there, somebody to take you there. Somebody to come get her. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to bring her home. Mm -hmm. It would have been, he could not, he said, we, I couldn't, I don't think I can do that. Mm -hmm. He said, I could if I wanted to, but I think in this case, I'm going to make it not easy for someone 
No, make them make easy. If other children are given the opportunity that they won't say blanket, no. Mm. Mm. Not till they had an opportunity. I said, oh boy. The mm. next time I saw Rabbi mm. Stern was when Walter's secretary was getting married. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time I had ever been to a breakfast celebration Mm -hmm. before they would take their vows and everything. Mm -hmm. Went into the hotel and I wanted wanted to ask, well, well, why are we going to the hotel? But he said, no, this is going to be my first experience. I said, in my mind too. We got in there. When we walked in, we heard a gong bell, gong, gong, entering Walter and Dorothea Bagby of Norfolk. Mm. I said, that was my name. I didn't know one of Walter's brothers, buddies who came, his buddy, Richard Gackalon. And when they received us with a little, that's, Dig- mm-hmm. I call it the dignified applause. Mm-hmm. We went in there and they had this waiter who came to say, would you prefer classical, temporary, all the kind of music. Walter looked at me, I, I said, it doesn't matter as long as we have music. I thought they were going to play a tape. I didn't know they had a, had a, uh, uh, had hired a professional Guitarists to play, mm. electronic guitarists. That must have been pretty new too back then. It, you're talking about. I thought I was in Hollywood mm. with Ber- Bernstein and, and uh, me- at the Metro Golden Mayor. Brother, I thought a snack should be maybe juice and coffee and a, and a Danish or something. They bought in a full course breakfast. Now you had already eaten something when you left home, but mm-hmm. you know it was gonna be a long day. After the day, we were in the at the middle of the eating, the gong bell sounded again to, to announce that the miss the one who was gonna go get married had just entered the the hotel mm-hmm. and lend an ear for the next gong. Mm-hmm. Now I want to know where did they get this gong thing from? Oh, not but a bell, but they call it a gong. When they walked in, everybody stood up and she came. The girl who's going to get married was embarrassed. I think she was embarrassed because she had probably planned how she was going to react to the announcing of her name for the last time. She got to the door and somebody went there, put the arm up there for her to touch it, not Mm -hmm. to pull onto it, just to touch. And with the touch, it was a a royal smile, I guess. Mm -hmm. They escorted her to the table where she was going to be seated. And the guy she was married was already, had already gotten in there ahead of her. He was already at a table. And the only thing you could see during the midst of their eating was the people at each other wink his eye or <laughs> blow a kiss. He <laughs> said, this is the this is Hollywood. I'm so glad Walter's working with a place that people can do things like this. Because I ain't never seen that before. I was still bit and they didn't have any sweet potatoes. I wanted to let you know. <laughs> this was before sweet potatoes. <laughs> Rabbi didn't know anything about, about sweet potatoes, I don't think. Hmm. If it did, they didn't have it, hmm. that's the only thing they didn't have. Because I we had um had a choice of if you wanted to have Breakfast shrimp. You could have um, something roast beef. You could have steak. 
Um, they didn't have bacon. It didn't have link sausages. They had all other kinds of meats that, you know, kind of, I call it expensive stuff that we didn't have at home. Well, did, they, did, did they have any fish? I mean, did you, did they have fish? Mm. Did they have fish? This is a crabbing area. No, they didn't have, they had, um, they had some kind of a, it may have been a salmon, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but I, they had fish. But it was not in the the fish that we see the shape mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. It was in uh, 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 a rectangle. No, oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, that that certainly is interesting. Like, that then, was an experience. I think I'll always forget, and I realized at that time. Be careful about giving our blanket instruction or ask them because you don't know the conditions at these homes, what they can do about trying to satisfy what the teacher asked them to do. And I said, I'm seeking this. I said, because when it starts getting, when schools open, it, it snowed a little and it was cold. And I said to children, please take time to put on a pair of socks. That's how the first time the socks came into it. Mm -hmm. They said, no one boy said, I don't have but one pair. And I had to save them when I get ready to go to Sunday school mm -hmm. to see Reverend somebody. And I said, well, you can just wear those, wear that and wash them. Mm. Oh, that's when the kids said, but I don't know how but one pair, mm. and I can't wash. I don't know how to wash mm. socks. Mm. Bright so, looked at me. She said, what are you going to do now? Go out and buy socks for everybody. I said, if I have the money, I'm going to give it. And I'm not going to ever say to the children mm. what to wear. I'm just going to tell them to wear what they have mm. and have time to wipe them off. Oh, one little girl said, I got some black pen leather shoes. Mm. I said, oh, they're pretty. She said, but my shoes don't shine anymore. One little boy said, you know what, get you a biscuit and rub over, <laughs> rub over the, your shoe and it'd be just like new. I looked at Miss Bright and I looked at the children. I said, a oh, biscuit. What they gonna do with a biscuit with a shoe to make it look new? You know what do it make it shine and clean? Oh, did it work? Did you try it? Did I try? Yes, I did. I said, I don't want my babies doing something that I, that I have not tried to say it works. Little girl came to school next to no more than little boys. So I told my mama what you said we should do about our black, black. Patent of the shoes. I said, what did I tell you to tell your mama? And, and he's, you didn't tell me to tell him, but you said to us what we could do to make our black patent leather shoes shine. But the little boys were not wearing black patent leather shoes. These were just for the girls. But these little kids went home and told the mama that I said, <laughs> for all of their black patent leather shoes, they got to use a biscuit to shine them up. Mm. Well, it's, it's, well, did it work? I'm still on Evidently, the, it worked because of the oil in the biscuit, I guess. Mm. Mm. Or, or the lard or whatever they were using. So you so you learned something too? And with little children, brother, I would learn something every day. And I had gotten in the habit of waking up early during the, during the night if an idea would come to me, something I can do with the children, I would roll over and get my legal pad with a pencil and put that idea down and look at it and see if I can work it out. By the time the sun would be coming up and folks getting ready to go to work, I would have had my idea 
completely on that legal page. And I said, I'm going to do it today while it's fresh in my mind. And I go to school and do it. Mm. But I have principals who would not who would not allow me to have that freedom. But you started out with that freedom and you never forgot it. That's right. And and the other night, the Mercedes was saying something about, we're going to write a little note to my brother in Florida mm. to go with the picture. I said, that's on my mind. I need to do it. I got right down there with a legal pen, pulled it out, got me a pen and started writing it. I wrote the letter that then, right mm. then. Mm. And the minute I said, love you, and getting ready to get an envelope, I said, I don't need to put an envelope. I'm going to put the note inside there with the picture. Mm. I felt very complete now. I said, I put this off long enough. Now I'm going to finish this letter and anything else I need to want to do. That's what I did. Mm. 